Whether you are new to NixOS or an experienced user, we all know it is a rabbit hole that goes very deep and descends rapidly. And so along the journey, every Nix user is likely to experience inevitable mistakes, ranging from harmless issues to potentially dangerous errors. Which is why today, we will talk about several mistakes you should be wary about when getting into NixOS, starting with the most basic common sense stuff you likely already know about, and finishing with some less obvious mistakes still frequently made by beginners. But before we begin talking about these mistakes, it would be a mistake not to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. I'm sure you all are already well aware what NordVPN is, it is one of the biggest VPN providers in the world after all, and one that I've personally used extensively. It's known for being blazingly fast, easy to use, and most importantly privacy-oriented, because in a world where surveillance and censorship are only getting worse day by day, protecting your online activity has become more crucial than ever. And NordVPN helps you with all of that by securely encrypting all the internet traffic on your device and allowing you to connect to any of the 118 countries all over the world, ensuring you get access to all possible news sources and protecting you from fake or malicious websites with its Threat Protection Pro feature. So if you are serious about online privacy and security, now is the perfect time to follow the link you see on the screen and in the video description to get an exclusive New Year's deal on NordVPN with whole 4 extra months included for free, only at nordvpn.com slash vimjoyer. And now, starting with the first dangerous mistake that I very often see beginner NixOS users make, which is simply not backing up their configuration or keeping it under version control. I know it sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised how often people accidentally end up with a corrupted configuration that it's hard to debug, or even delete it altogether with no easy way to undo the damage. So before you start configuring a machine you care about, please don't be lazy, initialize a git repo, push it to GitHub and thank yourself later. Doing so will also allow you to share it with others in case you ever have to ask for help, because trust me, it's much easier to find an error in a GitHub repo than a bunch of pastebin links. Now the second mistake, probably equally as common as the first one, is not understanding the difference between rebuilds, updates and rollbacks. Because if you never update, your package versions will remain the same forever. And believe it or not, NixOS Rebuild does not update your system. It simply creates a new system generation using package versions determined by Nix packages already present on your system. And if you want to actually update those Nix packages, you need to pass the dash dash upgrade flag to the command. This way, NixOS will first download a new version of Nix packages on your computer and only then rebuild your system, giving you a brand new NixOS generation with fresh new packages. However, the new package versions will of course only be present on this new generation of NixOS, since Nix has no problem storing unlimited amount of different versions of the same package, which neatly segues us to the third mistake many new Nix users do, not garbage collecting your Nix store. Because as you update and use shells, the old package versions and generations will accumulate over time, and eventually can even completely fill your disk. So to prevent this from happening, don't forget to regularly garbage collect the old generations. You don't need to overdo it, keep as many as you want, just like updating, when and how often you do it depends largely on your personal preference and specific use cases. Or alternatively, you can even automate both updating and cleaning processes using the options you see on the screen. Next, the fourth mistake I sometimes see people make is neglecting the declarative features of Nix. Like manually changing your GPU settings, desktop environment preferences, or even your user password, unaware that these changes will not be tracked by NixOS and no amount of rolling back will revert them. Want NixOS to keep track of something? Tell it about it, it's not some kind of magic backup system after all. And I am not saying that everything must be declared in an option, that's your choice, however, understanding what is and isn't a part of your configuration is crucial to avoid rollback and general system issues. But perhaps the most common mistake from this category, and one that I unfortunately very often see promoted online, is the use of the nix env command. What it does is permanently manipulate your nix environment, allowing you to imperatively do dangerous actions like installing or uninstalling packages. Which may not seem that scary at first, but the issue is that most actions performed by NixEnv will also require NixEnv to be undone, with no easy way to track the changes. Meaning by using it, you are putting yourself at risk of polluting your system with undeclared packages or even completely breaking your system. 
The same can be said for the Nix profile command, which is essentially a modernized Flake compatible alternative to NixEnv, but while it does offer a better approach to imperative package management, it still goes against the declarative principles of Nix and thus should be used with caution and only if you really know what you are doing. But for those of you who want to download software with one command, look into Nix shells, the much safer ephemeral environments that grant you temporary access to any packages you may need without any drawbacks of NixEnv or Profile. Next, before we continue to other real-world mistakes, a bonus mistake I was surprised to find out some people even make, completely avoiding the module system and keeping everything in one file. Come on guys, creating files on your computer is literally free and there is no real advantage to having a 2000 line monster flake with configuration.nix, hardware configuration.nix or even home.nix all embedded into it. It does not make your configuration any more portable, but only impairs readability and makes finding errors a nightmare. Alright, now the fifth mistake is actually two very related mistakes in one, which are trying to learn everything right away and overthinking everything before you even explore the Nix ecosystem. What do I mean by that? Well, the Nix ecosystem is absolutely giant, and if you as a new user try to learn everything right away, you will only confuse yourself and end up hating your computer. So take your time, don't overcomplicate things, use your machine for its intended purpose, and as you run into issues, look for solutions. After all, using NixOS is only as difficult as you make it be. But like I've said, don't be afraid to explore the ecosystem, as there are many cool tools and concepts you may not yet know about that could potentially improve your overall NixOS experience. Like Flakes, for example. On our Discord server, I've seen many people hesitant to try out flakes because they can seem daunting based on Google search results, but in reality they are not nearly as complex as some people may tell you and you do not need to understand all the inner workings to use them. In fact, the earlier you start using flakes, the less issues you will run into later, because flakes not only make rolling back updates easier, but also promote good reproducibility practices and even let you work with a more modern Nix CLI, which in my opinion is simply superior in every way. So do learn flakes early, but don't let the learning experience harm your productivity. And now the final, sixth mistake, super common among beginners, is assuming that non-FHS compliance of NixOS will somehow render the system completely useless to them. And yes, NixOS is not FHS compliant, meaning there is a high chance that some poorly written bash script you found on the internet will not work on it by default. But guess what? At the moment of recording of this video, there are more than 120,000 packages in Nix packages, more than in any other Linux repo, and some of them do rely on FHS for one reason or another, like Steam, Android Studio and VS Code FHS just to name a few. How come? Well it's all possible thanks to a function you can find in Nix packages called Build FHS Env, which you can use to create lightweight FHS sandboxes for any programs that rely on FHS. I'll talk more about it when I finally make a video about running unpatched binaries, but even if we don't take it into consideration, you can still easily use Docker or Distrobox to run any programs like on any other distro. Meaning non-FHS compliance of NixOS being a problem is basically a made-up overblown myth, which should not discourage you from trying the distro. And now, I'd like to thank all the amazing people that support the channel and keep it going, especially all of our great monthly members, and as always, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you're feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.